Thank you so much, sir, for uh, joining us and uh, for accepting our invitation for your talk, how to get published in the Quality Journal and your graph session is really, really informative. And I'm really pleased to see your name recently in one of the newspaper and the news was published in one of the US University about your uh, prestigious research scholar name in Pakistan. So congratulations to you. And over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sadia, <clears throat> for inviting me uh, for this webinar. I'm also thankful to the University of Education for uh, initiating such a, a useful webinar series. So today, uh, I am with you. So I will take uh, some of your time. Uh, to share with you uh, some of my achievements in the publications and some tips I will give to you. So my presentation is uh, <coughs> I'm going to share it with you. Uh, So I think you can see the presentation now. Yes, you can see. Books if you want. So our agenda for today, uh, it is uh, some information about me. Uh, nowadays, I am a Dean of uh, Faculty of Economics and Management Sciences and Chairman of the Department of Information Management at the University of the Punjab. Uh, I did my postdoctoral research at University of California, Los Angeles. I have published more than 170 publications. Uh, I have supervised many doctoral and master theses, MPhil and master. Uh, I have worked for many journals as a reader, reviewer or editorial board member. And I have been conducting uh, uh, different research based or uh, writing related uh, trainings in Pakistan and abroad. So, our today's agenda is, uh, first of all, I will share with you my publishing case study. So, after that, we'll discuss some issues regarding scholarly publishing in the world. Uh, then <clears throat> I will share with you uh, writing for publishing, then finding the publishing reviews, then article submission and review process, then publishing process, then how can Pakistan and abroad text text. Uh, some general articles from your thesis, how can you publish a book based on your thesis and at the end how can you propose publications after publications after publishing and at the end some of the ethical and legal issues related to publishing. So this is my publishing case study. Uh, this information is up to September of this year. So, uh, till that time, I published uh, seven books, two book chapters, 163 journal articles. So, at that time, five articles were accepted and refereed conference papers uh, three. Uh, and total, it, the total is 180. Uh, Authorship <clears throat> is before you. So I published my 50 publications uh, single-handedly and 130 publications with other authors. So international indexing scenario of my publications. Uh, there are uh, uh, some general indexing services and some of my subject indexing services. So, ISI impact factor articles, 
so uh, till september there were 44 publications uh, included in the isa impact factor uh, articles journals uh, scopus had 113 publications of mine uh, lista is uh, related to library and information science uh, it is issued by asco uh, this database has 123 publications of mine and lisa is also another library and information science assets published by proquest so they have 140 publications included in their database so where did papers come from so in my case uh, specifically written for journals uh, there were 73 articles uh, i have uh, converted conference papers into journal articles uh, in the number of 25 i have published 11 research articles extracted from my phd or postdoc thesis so my students have published <clears throat> and of course with my co-authorship 55 articles i uh, extracted from their thesis and uh, i have published five articles extracted from the thesis of my friends so this is my so when I did my PhD in 2004, after some time, I published my thesis in the form of a book. So I published it uh, locally. Then after four years, I published my thesis again from a publisher in Germany. So this thesis is also uh, freely available at the uh, Pakistan Research Repository maintained by Higher Education Commission of Pakistan. And uh, I have published nine papers extracted from my thesis. So this is my postdoctoral research report. So I published it in Germany in 2011. And uh, I again extracted two impact factor articles from this report also. So this was my brief uh, uh, profile of research. So this is my personal information. So I invite you if you have question stage. So I will be happy to answer it. So this part will be completed if you have any questions. So after that we will discuss how to publish and. <coughs> I will give you some tips. Uh, dear so, Dr. Sadia, if you, if you allow the participants yes. to ask something. Dear audience, if you have any questions, you can ask Dr. Khalid directly. If you have any questions. So, my voice is clear and the quality of the presentation is clear? Yes. To all, all of you? It is clear. Yes, please. Okay. If you want so, to ask so something regarding my research profile, otherwise, otherwise I will continue without any break. Yeah. So I will give you an offer at the end of the presentation. Yes, I think that uh, so that we can ask questions. So Sadia, uh, should I carry on? Yes, sir. Please carry on. Okay. 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 So, I am sharing with you. Mm, so, first of all, scholarly publishing. So, scholarly journal market in the world. So, I have found a report published in 2018 regarding the scholarly journal market in the world. So, that report shows that there are more than 42,000 peer-reviewed journals in the world. Out of them, 78% were in the English language. And uh, those uh, journals uh, were publishing over 3 million articles per year. 
this growth is three uh, percent per year. So uh, these articles are virtually available online. So regarding the subject area, uh, the largest area is biomedical sciences, which covers thirty percent of the publications. The smallest area is arts and humanities, which covers five percent. So China, only China produced 19% articles in the world. Then you can see the other countries figure. Uh, USA 18%, India 5%, UK 4%, Germany 4% and Japan 4%. So this is the scene from the world. Uh, open access scholarly publishing is very common these days. So the traditional model relies on commercial publishers. Libraries and readers have to purchase. Libraries and readers have to purchase and uh, the author uh, does not have to pay any fee. So it is a traditional model. But the new open access model in this model, author or his employer or funding agency has to pay uh, the publishing cost. So open access literature is digital, online, free of charge and free of most copyright and licensing restrictions. So the article is available. Expenditures are borne by author or employer. So benefits to the authors uh, are increasing visibility and obviously the citation rate has also been improved. So there are different models of open access. Uh, for example, green model is self-archiving in a, in a research repository. So author can uh, have a free copy of his article. Uh, to a research repository. There are many research repositories maintained by different institutions. So gold model uh, article in full hybrid or uh, embargoed open access journal. So in gold model uh, the journals uh, make the articles available free of cost. So it can be full free articles or, or hybrid model. Hybrid model means if some of the articles in a general issue may be free and others are with price. And embargo means they uh, put the articles with price for uh, some uh, specific time. For example, for three months or for six months. And after, the, after that embargo time, the article will be free. So there are uh, scams or uh, frauds in open access publishing also. Uh, there are many examples of uh, uh, kind of channels. So according to a rough estimate, uh, there were uh, uh, 12,000, uh, more than 12,000 open access channels in the world. Then writing for publishing. Uh, first of all, there is a basic question that why do you write and publish? So you must have a reason to write a research paper or piece of research and then to publish it. So I have gathered these possible reasons so you can see it. Uh, you have a research grant and must publish the results of your research. So your funding agency or your funder demands that you should publish. So in, in another case, you want a job or promotion. So I hope many of you are working in universities. So you want to become a professor. <clears throat> so for that purpose you need to publish 
sometimes you want to disseminate your work or research findings to a particular audience so publishing is the best way to uh, do this job you want your research to have critical social or scientific implications for change actually you are a researcher and you do research for change so in this case you want to share your publications share your findings share your outcome of the research with the people for change you want to contribute to intellectual discussion or scientific debate you want to generate your knowledge a new knowledge so you want to contribute in the new knowledge you are passionate about uh, your subject area and are compelled to write so first of all there must be a valid reason otherwise the writing of a research paper is not an easy job it is difficult it may be boring for you so first of all there must be a valid reason and a strong reason an important reason uh, to write a research paper and then uh, to publish it so if you have a reason and you have decided to write for publishing so you need a manuscript first of all so you will build uh, a manuscript or a piece of writing so for this purpose you have to budget your time for writing so you will prepare the first draft then review the first draft so you will have a second draft then you will get feedback from your so you will have to write a piece of paper first of all normally normally uh, the contents of a research paper are these so look at the list uh, it may be changed according to the format of the journal but usually these are the uh, main components of a research paper particularly for uh, journal articles so there must be a title there must be author name and uh, and his or her affiliation an abstract should be there some keywords three to five at least should be there there is a section of introduction literature review methods or procedure section <coughs> results section discussion conclusion references acknowledgments biographical sketch appendices so these are the main components of a research paper so what should be the format of a research paper which you have to design so it is normally determined by the journal which you have targeted so you should see the website of the journal so you will find guidelines of formatting your paper so normally uh, there are differences in these areas style of reference for example apa or harvard or mla or some other uh, reference style so the format of the figures line spacing normally it is uh, double line spacing but it can a uh, general policy uh, what font name or font size uh, they will recommend you what is the word limit a general article write uh, they will guide you it should be a british english style or <laughs> should you should you american english so what kind of file you will make it uh, mostly journals demand a uh, uh, microsoft document file microsoft word file but sometime they demand pdf or any other format so these are issues related to the file of a paper then 
you get a <clears throat> useful sources for authors so there are author guide books you will find author guide books in a library on the internet uh, there are author associations you can join any associations on the net even there are online resources uh, which guide to the authors so we will see some of them author aid uh, you can google it it is a free resource author aid so you can join it freely they have many many very good presentations and very good documents uh, guiding the authors how to write a good paper so author aid so i personally recommend you to use this resource another resource is emerald and you know emerald insight is a publisher so uh, they have made a support page for authors so you will find on the emeraldinsight.com website uh, information for authors so they have a lot of information helping the authors so you know taylor and francis is another publisher so they also have author services on their website so you can find taylor and francis uh, through google and uh, you can easily find for author guides where will you uh, publish your article so there are also some uh, guiding sources how to find so this is a list so i will uh, explain it one by one in coming slides first of all this is the pulitzer international periodical directory this is a comprehensive directory of journals in the world the most comprehensive covering all the in the world it is not although it is not free but you can find it uh, uh, you can check it uh, through your library and that you can find its password or not so odrich odrichweb.com it is their uh, web version and the old version of odrich radical directory you can find it in the in the big libraries of pakistan uh, in the form of print version so uh, this resource offers uh hand information regarding journals in all areas so this is a sample entry in odrich you can see that issn title publishing body country status starting year frequency and uh, many other uh, information pieces regarding a journal then uh, uh, there is a free directory of open access journals it is doaj you can find it easily uh, with the help of google so do a directory of free and open access journals in the world so nowadays there is a large number of open access so this directory not only uh, give you links of the open access journals but also indexes the articles published in those journals so in my opinion you should also see this all these sources actually will help you to find a suitable journal for your article so for new researchers or for new publishers it is always difficult to find a relevant or suitable journal for his or her article uh, this is journal citation reports 
uh, well known uh, so uh, knowledge so of science and social sciences so these are covered and any general uh, included in this list is called an impact factor general so otherwise it is not an impact factor general so jcr is is also not free uh, but it is available with the hcc so you can take help from the hcc office or any other library uh, which have the connection of this. So JCR can be seen that uh, which journal is an impact factor journal in any area. In Genta Connect is uh, a list of journals. Uh, at least the list is uh, freely available online. So you can uh, see the website of Ingenta Connect and uh, find a journal for your paper. So this is another uh, resource, uh, Elsevier has started it uh, recently. So this service is very interesting. They, they ask you to give them uh, the title of your article, then uh, uh, the abstract, then keywords, and their system will find a suitable journal for you. So Elsevier Journal Finder includes all the journals available with them in the Scopus database. And you should know that in Scopus database, there are more than 25,000 journals in different uh, areas. So you can take help from Elsevier Journal Finder. So you can find its website with the help of Google. So how to select right journal? So these are some tips. For example, number one, the you must look at your reference list. Uh, you have written a paper and uh, you have used many resources and your reference list is a depiction of the sources you have used. So find a suitable journal in your reference list. So if you have used uh, sources from a specific journal, so that specific journal may be the most suitable journal for your manuscript also. So similarly, you can take uh, advice from your seniors, from your colleagues, so they can help you in finding the suitable journal. So you can think about the who will want to read your paper, your readership related to your country or your region, or it is globally, or it is in a specific country. So you can read papers from short history journals. So reading paper is, uh, is a must for you because it gives you an idea that what kind of articles a specific journals journal is publishing so it will help you to find a suitable journal so put your short list of journals in rank order from first choice to last choice and your choice uh, may depend upon the impact factor or any other scoring system of the journal so you can uh, discuss your choice with your co-authors. So in this way, you will find a right journal. So criteria you can use for selection of a journal. So there are many things to consider. First of all, you should see the refereeing system. So the journal is refereed, it is not refereed, it is uh, uh, blind refereed, it is peer reviewed or not. This journal has impact factor or any other uh, kind of citation scores or not. 
what is the circulation of that journal uh, what is the type of the journal it is a magazine or it is a research journal or uh, how much time they will take to process your article and publish your article sometime you are in hurry but the journal uh, takes more time but sometime you don't have an issue of time you can see the reputation of editors you can see the editors names and their affiliation so that particular journal may be a professional journal issued by a professional organization or or issued by a commercial organization and you must see the quality of production also because uh, you have put a lot of effort in writing your article but if you send your article to a poor quality journal so they will publish your article but its quality will not be good so be very careful to select your journal so now you have selected your required journal and you have formatted your paper according to the format then you are ready to submit your uh, uh, article so manuscript submission so there are guidelines for authors on the websites of <coughs> websites of journals so then you see the process so this is a flow chart of uh, article submission process so look at this slide and uh, i have explained this uh, process in these steps so look at the steps so normally uh, these days journals have websites they have online submission forms so you will have to open the online submission form and uh, fulfill all the requirements for submission information about the author the information about the article and the full text of the article so you have submitted so first of all the editorial team uh, will have first scanning of your article so they will see the relevancy of the article with their policies with their priority areas normally normally it will take uh, one week or so so if they accept your article for review so they will send it to the reviewers so they will select the reviewers so for reviewers purpose sometime the editorial team has uh, their own reviewers sometime they ask you to give the names of the reviewers <coughs> and normally there is a double blind peer review so you no know, double blind means the writer does not know the names of the reviewers and reviewers do not uh, know the name of the author or writer so it is called double blind review so normally it will take uh, 3 months or 12 weeks to make the review possible then the reviewers uh, send their uh, decisions to the editor and the editor Uh, communicates the decisions to the author so the decisions may be of one of the three types your paper uh, has been accepted or it is uh, clearly and straight forwardly rejected or uh, in many cases so there is a revision so if there is a revision uh they will inform you and give you a reasonable time for revision so you will uh, 
resubmit your paper, a revised version of your paper, and then there will be final decision. So, how they will uh, judge your paper? So, there is also a criteria for that. So, look at these points. Uh, normally, they ask their viewers to see these. Something to the existing knowledge. Is the article demonstrably related to what has been previously written? Are the arguments employed valid in terms of the body of knowledge? Is the article easy to read? Do the arguments flow logically? Are the conclusions strong? But you can find other points also if you Google uh, this question. So, what is the judging criteria for a research paper? So, you will find many tips. Uh, this is a sample form. <coughs> Normally, the journals team uh, sent to the uh, reviewers. So, if you look at this form, so title of the manuscript and then there is a scale. So in this example, uh, there are 10 items and uh, and in front of 10 items, uh, there is a scale. So how, how much the topic is good and the article based on sound rationale and etc, etc. And at the end, there is a space for uh, recommendations and recommendation like accept or reject or accept with changes so uh, look at this example and uh, keep in your mind that uh, normally journals follow such type of examples so how you can handle reviewers comments so in most of the cases you will see that uh, they will give you comments for uh, revising your paper. So in this case, make adjustments and dash explanation. Uh, don't feel obligated to make all recommended uh, changes. Sometime uh, uh, you will have to disagree with the uh, recommendations. You, you may disagree, but you have to give the reasons. So don't take comments personally. Actually, in the in the world of research, so the referees or reviewers are helping us, helping a, an author, a writer, to make the article good and improve its uh, quality. So you should always. Uh, Deployed in all your correspondence and of all the uh, give the thanks note to the reviewers. So I'm thankful to the reviewers. They have uh, keenly uh, read my paper and give many valuable suggestions and then give your answer. So now uh, you have uh, submitted the revised version and then publishing process. So, sometime you will have to pay the author fee or publication fee. So, it is not always in all cases. So, if there is a fee, so you must uh, pay it. Then they will ask you to fill and sign the copyright agreement form. So in this case, the copyright of your article will be with the uh, Then they will uh, issue a decision of uh, the issue of the general. 
they will give you the decision when your article will be published on the website in which issue it will be included so they send your paper to the copy editor and then proofreading sometime they send the article to you for proofreading and in that case uh, you have not a lot of time normally 24 hours or sometime 48 hours and then your article will be printed and in most of the cases these days they put your uh, formatted and finalized article on the website and after that <clears throat> they will print it in the paper and nowadays you know that many of the journals have uh, <clears throat> left the practice of publishing the article on paper so it will be only available to the website of the journal so they will notify you they will inform you about the publication and if it is uh, printed then they will give you to do and sometimes the off prints off prints is, is actually a separate stapled uh, form of your article separated from the main issue so they will give you some off prints also 25 off print yeah, sometime sometime 50 of prints so this is the publishing process of, of an article now we will come to another topic of our today's presentation it is from thesis to journal article so you have already written a thesis and defended your thesis and got the degree this thesis may be of masters of mphil or phd or postdoc at any level so now you have your thesis in your hands and you have defended it and got the degree so now you have to decide that uh, you will extract one or more articles from your thesis so so take your thesis before your eyes and then decide how many articles can be published in this thesis then you cut and paste the information and then edit it in separate ms word files so you will have to rewrite some parts of the paper because now the information should be in the form of an independent article so each article should be independent with all required contents so normally in this practice we make our supervisor a co-author although a main author should be yourself so in this way you can uh, extract some articles from your thesis so you can uh, publish a book based on your thesis so in this case uh, you will have to follow this procedure first of all you don't have the copyright of the of the thesis with you so you should seek permission from your university so then improve the contents then improve the language and then reformat it because at that time the formatting was according to the thesis for example in thesis uh, you must follow the double line spacing policy but in a book it should be a single line policy so then you can find a publisher and if you are uh, difficulty to find a publisher for your book so you can publish it uh, by yourself a small amount of money you can invest on your book and after publishing a book you can give the copies uh, to the libraries with price or you can give the copies of your book to your friends or your colleagues so you will have a book based on your thesis so last two concepts it is promoting your publications so when you have published an article or uh, you have published a book then you can uh, 
benefit from these tips if you have published a book you should send it to the newspaper and other magazines to write a book review on your book you can make a flyer or a brochure of your book <clears throat> you can arrange a book launching ceremony and uh, you may send the information about your paper or book in your email discussion groups in the area in which you are working uh, websites for research there are uh, also other uh, websites or social media platforms so uh, twitter and facebook are also for sharing information you can send and for your field so you can send the information or make news about your publication in newsletters or newspapers so you can uh, <clears throat> send the information to the search engines or subject directories so the information can easily uh, be found on the internet so you can uh, <clears throat> send the information to the indexing and abstracting databases of your field you can uh, put the information regarding your book on the online bookstores and uh, <clears throat> last but not the least uh, you should share your work with your students or research team so that uh, uh, they that they will continue work in your area so in this case they will cite your work and your work will get uh, more citations if you disseminate the information in a good way so at the end ethical and legal issues regarding the publishing of articles the writing of articles so ethical issues uh, we have to consider for our uh, uh, publishing these are some of the issues so we should accurately report the uh, results so we should uh, take care of data retention and data sharing in the ap manual you will find the detail of these points so how much for how much time you should retain your questionnaires or retain your data so duplication and piecemeal publication you should avoid an unnecessary duplication or uh, you must avoid plagiarism and you know plagiarism these days is an offense in the eyes of the hec in pakistan also so you must uh, protect confidentiality of your participants such participants so make arrangements for that and uh, at the end conflict of interest so you should avoid any conflict of interest in your research or publication so this is the last slide legal considerations so you must give the publication credit to your co-authors so you must be very careful to decide about co-authorship in a work based on a student's thesis normally it is a word by practice that your student should be the first author so who must be the authors and what is the order of the authorship so this issue is very uh, carefully handled so there is a publishing contract also for example they have copyright so if the copyright is with the journal then you cannot uh, uh, put your full text article on social media websites so you must comply with the regulations or rules or laws of the nation regarding uh, published work and at the end uh, you should re refrain yourself also to defame any 
any institution or any individual so best of luck uh, my friends my colleagues so now dr sadia if, if we have time now so you can invite questions Thank if there so are much. any here, audience, if you have any question, uh, so you can ask directly to Dr. Khalid or you can use the chat box and I can pass on your question. <clears throat> if you have any question, please let me know. Dr. Khalid, I have a question, please. Okay. Okay, thank you. I have a question. What sort of research we need to actually conduct to publish easily to approach a journal? So, what should be the sensitivity or the nature of the research and we are just approaching a journal? So, what should we look for? Actually, it depends on the nature of the research. Yes, you, yes, you, are, you have rightly said that. It depends on the nature of the research. So, <clears throat> I will suggest you that uh, you must be familiar with the uh, most of the journals in your field. If you are a researcher, then it, it should be your uh, habit or your uh, practice in your life that you should see the uh, new issues of your uh, journals in your area. So in my case, I have subscribed the table of contents of many journals in my area. So whenever uh, there is a new issue, uh, they send an email to me and uh, I, I have a look, I have scanned the table of contents and uh, at the same time I, I download the any relevant article. So in this case, uh, after some experience, you will learn that so what kind of journal uh, is suitable to you and what kind of journal is not suitable to you and what is the quality of the journal, what, what uh, they demand for publication. So it always uh, uh, based on the nature of the research you are doing. So if you have written some, already written something, then you will find a journal, but other, yeah, uh, other way around, if you have not started your work, you should first find a journal and then write an article. So uh, look at the articles of the journals that what kind of research I should take up. Uh, you know, nowadays in Pakistan, even the Higher Education Commission, they have introduced one list of the journals, HBRS. And there they have incorporated some journals. They asked for the heavy fee. And I have uh, seen the practice of some faculty members. They are paying huge money and they are just publishing their work to just get promotion. So is it the ethical process or do you call it unethical? Actually, and how can it stop? Actually, 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 the price for or the cost for publication is a very common nowadays. So we cannot uh, relate the cost of the publishing with the quality of the paper. There are many journals which are good quality and they have a high fees. And on, on the other hand, there are many journals which are fee, but they are quality. So there is no correlation between the author fee and uh, for example, for example, one of my PhD students has sent uh, her article to uh, with price and that they have a huge price and they will accept my paper uh, within a few days. So the quality does not really uh, price. So in my opinion, uh, my opinion personally don't are the uh, high priced journals or high journals uh, get a space in a free journal but normally free journals take more time more time for thing 
and more time for uh, more waiting time for political article so is uh, you will have to wait for a time dear audience do you have any other question please okay. questions please any question from the science discipline or from the social sciences mm -hmm. okay. so we have uh, members from different cities also yes yeah. uh, professional development day and we have faculty from uh, across uh, disciplines uh, okay okay the social sciences and so on well, uh, well, thank you so much, Dr. Khalid, for accepting my invitation and conducting a nice session on how to get published in Quality Journal. And uh, thank you for sharing information about selecting the right journal through the different sources. And thank you so much once again for joining us. So thank you, Sir. Thank you. Thank you all for listening to my presentation. Yeah. So see you again, inshallah. Allah, inshallah. Allah Hafiz. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.